Now, one of the major advantages of using a no-code tool such as Flutterflow to build your app is how easy it is to do so. All you need to do is drag and drop various widgets or components, connect them in ways that make sense for your app, and you're well on your way to building the app of your dreams. Flutterflow comes loaded with an array of useful and easy to use components that make getting started easy and intuitive. But let's say the app that you want to build requires a component that Flutterflow doesn't have. No problem, because we can always create a custom widget that does pretty much anything we want. And so in today's video, I'll be showing you five powerful and easy to use custom widgets that will make your app more robust and more intuitive for your users. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I discuss in these videos can be viewed and or cloned from my amazing Patreon community. And if you're still not a member of our incredibly rapidly growing, very helpful Patreon community, then you can learn more about it and hopefully become a member via the first link in the description below the video. So here I am inside of Flutterflow and I went ahead and I built a proof of concept app that shows you how to use these awesome five custom widgets that I'm going to be showing you in today's video. And before I show you how I actually built this app, let's go ahead and take a look at the widgets so that you can see the value that these widgets are going to be providing to your apps all right so here is my app here and the first widget that i want to show you is a widget that gives you this editor view okay so here i have a header here and if we expand it here you can see how it expands right here and right here we can actually type so let's say i want to type something hey how are you now once i type something i can select all of this and i can change the font size i can make it huge i can make it bold italic uh, i can make it underline i can also do undo i have more of these things i can change the color as well if i want right i can select like the color here okay uh i can change the background color i can clear the format i can select this and clear the format bringing it back to the original i can also insert a numbers list a bullet list a checklist a code block etc etc i can do all kinds of interesting things and so if you are looking to build an app that needs to take in some kind of rich text okay so not regular text something a little bit more interesting and really a lot of apps that are going to be taking user input right so like maybe a blog type of app or some kind of a description where a user needs to write a description of something you're going to be using a widget such as this one and what kind of widget is this well the widget that we're using is called flutter quill and this is a widget that i actually discovered thanks to someone in our private patreon community and so thank you so much for suggesting that i talk about this widget and this is actually a fairly popular widget 99 percent popularity lots and lots of likes so you can head over here and you can learn more about this widget now how do you make use of this widget in your flutterflow app well Let's go ahead and jump back into Flutterflow. And as you can see, this is the widget that I have here, okay? And this widget is called Widget 1. And if we jump over here, you can see this widget here. So this is actually a very, very simple implementation, okay? And so all you need to do is come back here and you want to click on Read Me and you're going to be given a quick kind of usage right so this is this quick usage and all you want to do is copy this then come back to your app and if you click over here you're going to have this skeleton here right so if you load it this thing by default returns a container and instead you want to return this widget okay and so you can customize it here i only minimally customized it right i gave it the english language it's you know you can have any language that you want uh you can have any kind of settings you can make it read only and this is just the beginning right you have lots and lots of you know settings you can have it autofocus you can you know read only disable clickboard you can have so many things and so regardless what kind of app that you are going to be building chances are this widget is going to be perfect because you have your editor screen 
but you also have the toolbar configuration right that's also fully customizable you can you can uh choose what kind of settings do you want to show on your toolbar and so you know the regardless what kind of app you're going to be building if you need kind of a rich text component where you know the user needs to type more than just the text but maybe actually format the text insert links uh etc etc then this is the widget that you want to be looking at and the widget is called flutter quill now the next widget i want to show you is a widget that allows you to display code in a very kind of intuitive way because it formats it for you and it does this color coding and things like that so it's a similar widget to the previous but it's specific for code and what is the name of the widget that i'm using this widget is called the flutter code editor right so if you scroll down you can see it has syntax highlighting for over 100 languages it has code block folding order completion etc etc so if you're building an app that needs to display code it has to do something with code maybe the user needs to insert code and you want to display it in a nice way this is the widget that you want to be using so let's go ahead and jump back into flutterflow so that i can show you how i use it this is the second widget here widget 2 and all we have is a very very minimal configuration because all we need to do is we have this controller and then we have a sample python app okay it doesn't really matter what language that we are displaying you can display it any language that you want in fact here i specify language python so it supports you know 100 languages so regardless what language you're going to be using and displaying you can select that language and here i have a very very simple python app that i just use chat gpt to generate i just said generate me a very very simple python app just as a proof of concept and as a result it's able to display it really really nicely right and we also have this code folding ability so the user can fold this section or fold this section and just take a look at some of the other pieces of code okay so how exactly do you implement it well if you go back to your widget here and by the way all of these widgets are hosted on pop.dev okay so if you head over to pop.dev and search for this widget you're gonna find this so if you scroll down you're gonna see a sample setup and this is the only thing that i'm doing right i'm specifying python and here i'm specifying the actual text and this is going to be the actual code or the actual program that we want to display in this widget so a very very simple widget but it makes you know the hard task of actually displaying this code in a very kind of intuitive way super easy and super hassle free so if you're ever going to be displaying code for whatever reason this is going to be the widget that you want to be using now the next widget that i want to show you is going to give you kind of that story behavior so if you've seen it on facebook or you've seen it on instagram people can upload stories and they basically display over a very very small amount of time so if you come back here and we load this again you can see this first story and if i click on it it goes to the second story and if i click on it again it skips and goes to the third story and so this is the type of widget that is going to be super useful if you are building this kind of story functionality in your app so maybe you're building like a consumer type app maybe a social network type app then you definitely want to make use of this widget it makes it super easy to get started and what is this widget called this widget is called story view and it's also a very very popular widget and it makes it super easy and super hassle free to display any kind of story any kind of you know content whether it's text uh image or video in this kind of story format so if you head over to pop.dev and you search for story view you're gonna see this widget here and if you go on the main page here and you click on read me here you're typically gonna have a very very simple example and this is the example that i've used remember when you create a brand new custom widget you're given a template in flutterflow and that template simply returns an empty container and so typically what you want to do is you want to get this code over to your template so instead of returning an empty container 
it's going to be returning whatever that you have in your custom widget. And in this case, this is kind of what I'm using. Now, if we head over back to our app and you can see this widget, this is widget three. And so what I did was I basically created three stories, right? So as you can see, story item text, story item text, and then we have story item page image. Okay. And you're not just limited to these text or page image. You have other stories, right? So like with a video as well. Now, what I did here was I created like three sample stories and actually took these examples from the widget uh, documentation as well. And I also made a couple of changes. Okay. So another thing that you can do with these widgets is that you can easily connect them to your Flutterflow app. So instead of these widgets just displaying stuff that you give it, you can also have something called a callback that lets your app know that something happened inside of this custom widget. And on this widget specifically, I created two callbacks, right? I'm making use of these two callbacks. So whenever we show a story and whenever it's complete, okay? So what I did was, if we take a look here on the right-hand side, I have these two callbacks. I have parameters that are actions and you can do that by adding a parameter clicking here and then scrolling down and you want to select an action that creates a function in here that you can call that you can access from your app that I'm going to show you in just a second. So I went ahead and created these two functions here on story show and on story complete. And then when we actually, you know, display this widget, right? This is this widget three here. I have access to these uh, callbacks here, right? So now what I can do is I can simply come over here and I can, let's say, show a snack bar, right? I can say show a snack bar. And this is what? What was that? The name of this? This is on story show, right? So we can say, you know, story show. Okay. And then I have another call by here, story complete. I can do story complete. I can come over here and I can do a uh, snack bar and I can say story complete. Okay. And so now when we run the app, we're going to be executing these two callbacks. And as a result, we're going to be seeing the events. We're going to be seeing those snack bars for each of these callbacks. And so now if I go ahead and reload my app, you're going to be seeing some extra behavior as well. And so here is my app with the changes. And if we head over to this widget here, you see it's, we have this callback here, right? And here it says story show. And now it says story complete. Okay, so we're getting these events back to our app as things are happening inside of these custom widgets. And this makes it super useful to react on these events okay maybe we want to do something we want to let the user or maybe we want to log this somewhere or maybe we want to make sure the user sees the whole story so we don't want that event to kind of trigger we can do so many things we have complete control thanks to these callbacks and you have access to all of these actions so you can do pretty much anything that you want at this point now the next widget that i want to show you is a widget that makes it super easy to display playing cards. And before I show you this widget, I want to quickly thank a member inside of our private community that first suggested that I talk about this widget. Thank you so much. Keep the suggestions coming. So as you can see, we have a one playing card here. And here you can change whether you want to display spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. So let's say I want to display hearts. And now we are seeing the ace of hearts. Let's say I move on to diamonds. We're seeing an ace of diamonds. And on this side, I can change the card that I want to display. So let's say I want to display the seven. And this is the seven here. I want to display the nine. I have the nine. I want to display the 10. I want to display the two, et cetera, et cetera. I want to change it to hearts, right? So this is a quick demo that allows you to display these cards here. And obviously this is just a demo. You know, you can build so many cool, you know, games, with playing cards. You can even have these playing cards display in an app. You can have drag and drop functionality. It makes it all super easy. And the best part of it all is that you don't need to, you know, generate these cards yourself, right? You don't need to draw these cards from scratch, right? You have a widget that you just need to tell it what kind of card you want to have displayed, you want to have rendered, and it's going to go ahead and render it for you. Now, this widget is called Playing Cards. It's available on pop.dev. And so if you head over to README, you can learn 
a little bit more about this widget, right? So if you scroll down, you can have some examples that allow you to customize it, right? So here you can customize it. You can display the back of the card. It's a very, very cool widget that's going to come in handy in all kinds of different scenarios. And so let's go ahead and jump into my Flutterflow app so that I can show you how I've implemented. This is this fourth demo here. This is the fourth widget here. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have a widget here called Card Phone View. So typically, this would say container, right? So if you click over here, this is your template, right? You're going to have this empty container. So all you need to do is have this Card Phone widget. And that's actually very, very easy to do as well. So if you head over to example, you have this whole card home view and everything. So all you need to do is copy this, go back to your app, paste it in here, and then call it instead of that empty container. That's all you need to do. And as a result, you have this nice kind of this proof of concept UI that allows you to kind of test out and display different card widgets. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want to further customize it, then you definitely want to read the documentation that kind of walks you through it. Now, there's also a quick video overview right here, so you can check out the video if you don't like reading, and you're going to have kind of this visual overview. But it's very, very easy because the hard part is already done for you, right? So all the rendering is done for you, right? So just like how I said previously, if you want to, you know, have it done with drag and drop, then all you need to do is wrap it in a drag and drop widget in Flutterflow. Uh, if you want to, you know, have it some kind of behavior, then you can do that as well. Makes it super easy. So definitely check out playing cards on pop.dev if you want to have this kind of playing card functionality in one of your apps or in one of your games. Last but not least, I want to show you a widget that I talked about in one of my previous videos, but I want to talk a little bit more about this widget because it's super, super useful. And this is a widget that lets your app know whether another widget is visible on the screen, okay? And this is super useful in all kinds of apps. And the one example that quickly comes to mind is kind of a chat app, right? Something like a Telegram or a WhatsApp clone or iMessage or anything of that sort where you need to know whether the other person has seen the message that you send them so that you can let the other person, the sender, know that their, their message has been seen. And in one of my apps previously, I implemented this kind of functionality using this widget. So in this demo, we have a list of different text widgets that display different American cities. So if I come back out and I come back here, initially, you see it says Scene Atlanta. Now, you may not know behind this container is actually a scrollable list that will display one city at a time. And so if I scroll through it, you can see now it says Scene San Francisco, okay? If I keep scrolling and... I don't get to it, it's not going to say anything. But if I keep scrolling, now it says Detroit, and it says Scene Detroit. And the way that I have it set up is that if more than 50% of the widget is visible, then you know, we can safely say that that widget is visible. Okay, You can customize that. You can make it anything that you want. You can set it to 100 if you want. But I just set it to 50%. And so now if we scroll... And now, you know, it's still saying scene Detroit, right? Because Detroit is visible, but it's not saying anything about New York because New York is barely visible, right? It's less than 50% of this New York is visible, right? So if I scroll down, now New York is visible. It says scene New York, okay? Now if I keep scrolling, we're still seeing New York, okay? And now I, you can barely see Miami, but it's not 50% yet, right? So if I keep scrolling, now Miami is visible, scene Miami. All right, so what is this widget called, right? This widget is called Visibility Detector. And it's one of the most useful widgets that I feel that you're going to be using in your apps because there's so many useful scenarios where, you know, you might want to use this widget, right? So if you head over to pop.dev, you can search for visibility detector and has 100% popularity, almost a thousand likes, right? So a lot of people really, really like this widget, okay? So if you click on readme, 
and you scroll down you're going to be given a very very simple example you can simply copy and paste uh, in your custom widget and that's going to show you how this widget works right so let's go ahead and jump to my app so that i can show you how i made use of this widget so this is this last widget widget 5 and what we have here is we have this visibility detector that we return now the trick here is that you want to include the widget that you care about as a child widget which is what we have here but when you're setting up this visibility detector you have this unvisibility change and that is why anytime the visibility changes this callback gets called okay so we have this unseen callback that gets called that we can interface inside of our flutterflow app okay now as you can see here i have this visible percentage that is set to this visible fraction times 100 because initially it's not in percentages it's actually from zero to one so zero not visible or one fully visible and in order to convert it to a percentage we multiply it by 100 and next we check if the visibility percentage is greater than 50 which means that more than 50 percent of the widget that we're dealing with is visible if it is visible we are going to be calling our callback just like we were doing in one of the previous examples okay because we have this unseen callback here that we pass the name of the widget this is this unseen callback and then we also when we set up the widget we give it a name and, and that way when the widget is visible we're going to be calling this unseen callback with the name of the widget right so if we come back to our ui here and go to this last example and select this widget right here scroll down you see we are giving it a value right we're giving it like any kind of value here we have a city name because this is actually a list view and we have a list of cities here right we just have a list of cities and so that list view you know it's going to be populated with each of these visible widgets with a different city and so if we come back over here we give it a name and next we have this unseen action here or this callback that allows us to take a particular action anytime this widget that we're dealing with is visible on the screen and more specifically anytime more than 50 percent of that widget is visible on the screen so if you click here you can see i have a snack bar just to show you how it works right and here because we are dealing with an action that accepts a parameter right so inside of this widget you know i am passing a parameter right so as you can see it says on scene it inputs the name of the widget and here we're passing the name because it's not enough to simply call this callback uh we need to know what is the widget that we're dealing with right because you know that allows us to kind of you know have more information kind of take further action right because if this is a city san francisco is visible maybe we want to do one thing if another city like atlanta is visible we want to do something else right so being able to identify the specific widget that triggered this callback is super important right so if we come back over here with this widget selected we open this up and now we have a text combination and all we're doing is scene name now this name here is an action parameter right so if you click over here you have something called callback parameters that you're going to have this uh, enable this visible anytime you have these uh, action parameters defined in your custom widget so in our case we only have this name defined and because the callback is executed with a specific name we have access to this name so here all we're doing is we have a text combination where we just say scene and the name that was passed from our custom widget and as a result you have this nice behavior so if i scroll up the visibility of this changes from not visible to visible and that is why the callback is called if i scroll it a little bit the visibility also changes right so you know now we're seeing this widget it changes and now we're seeing the whole thing it changes again because the visibility keeps changing we might go from not visible to visible we might go to you know barely visible to fully visible or almost fully visible right those states are changing and as a result that callback is executing okay so this widget here it may not be super fancy or super interesting but it's going to be super useful in many of the apps that i can think of where a visibility of a widget is important right knowing whether a specific widget is visible on the screen or how much of that widget is actually visible this is 
a really really cool widget that i'm sure you're going to be using probably in more of your kind of um production ready complex apps or maybe even some of your simple apps right it's really really up to you now another thing that's really up to you is how far you want to take it and in what kind of apps do you want to use some of these widgets that i talked about because we have to agree that these widgets are super useful and they enhance the user experience and they make your app a lot more robust and so the best way to kind of get started with these widgets is by getting access to this app that i have right here and you can do exactly that when you join our amazing patreon community because when you become a member you're going to get access to this app which means you'll be able to easily clone it so that you can take a look at it in your own computer in your own spare time at your own pace and best of all you can use some of these functionalities in your apps as well so you can get started with this app as i have it here or you can copy and paste some of this code or you can modify it you can do anything that you want it's just the easiest way to get started of course you still have to read the documentation but as they say practice makes perfect and so getting access to this app is going to definitely accelerate your process and remember when you join our amazing patreon community you're not only going to get access to this app, you're going to get access to tons of other apps that I talked about on this channel. Pretty much all the apps that I talked about on this channel are available to be viewed and or cloned as a member of our amazing Patreon community. Plus, you're going to get access to more content, including our Patreon-supported masterclass series where I essentially do deep dives of various topics, tools, apps, different concepts that the audience wants to know more about so if you're interested in being able to view and or clone all of these apps you want to interact with other amazing members of our community plus you want to get access to more content and more importantly you want to support this channel and support my work then you definitely need to join our amazing patreon community and you can do just that via the first link in the description below the video